So on a Zoom with me all the way in South Africa from wherever in the world we'll find out where he is now is Dylan Ragland. You will know him as Party Favor. We're about to play his very, very brand new single. But there is a lot of story that we're going to unpack behind Dylan and who he is and how he becomes Party Favor. But um, firstly, welcome, welcome to the Zoom. Thank you so much for joining me, Dylan. Thank you so much for having me. This is so cool. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I would have never imagined that I could have been able to, you know, talk with you like this. You know, you're halfway around the world. I'm in L.A., Los Angeles, California, and, uh, you know, you're in South Africa. So that's pretty incredible. Uh -huh. It's what COVID did, though. I live here now. I, I've moved into Zoom. Like, this is this is my whole life now. <laughs> Which I mean... <laughs> It's both good and bad, right? Because I mean, everything is now moved online. I remember we used to drink wine with our friends in real life. And now I'm drinking wine with my friends on Discord every Friday. So like everything yeah. is here, but I feel like I'm also losing people and like connection. Yeah, I see that. Is it, is it uh, pretty shut down there still where you're at? Um, no, it's we've kind of just come out of it. I mean, we're still masking mm -hmm. and we're still behaving. Um, but it, I think a lot of people are still afraid. The festivals and stuff have just started to open. Concerts have started to open. I'm ready. I will go. I would have gone yesterday. I'm ready. Right. Stand in the sun and drink warm beer and fight for. Sp I'm ready. I've never been more ready. I love it. Yeah, it's it's uh it's it's been open here for a while too, but uh, it's you still see a good portion of people that are wearing masks in the you know the grocery stores or the um, the airport and whatnot. But it's you know we're we're getting more people getting it again, so it's definitely here to stay. But, uh, you know, anyways, yeah, good old COVID conversations. Lots of fun. <laughs> <We're gonna have laughs> That's what we called about, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually not an interview with me. It's we're just here to talk about COVID. So, uh, you know. Sorry, just, Dylan. I thought, I, I mean, I know you thought that we were going to talk about your single, but it's all about COVID and like, nah, what nah, nah. Um, who cares about me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. We care about you a lot. But speaking of COVID, um, during the pandemic, you, you were writing, you were doing, you you were making music right but that's yeah. not what you studied you're you're actually a filmmaker correct yeah i went to you know i went to college and was working on film sets uh, at a young age and when i was very very young i wanted to be an actor funny enough and uh i was an actor and uh i i, I loved i feel like i just always have felt comfortable in front of people and um you know performing and it's just weirdly you know one thing led to kind of a new world and then that led into new interest and I, I've always been someone who's kind of like chased after whatever I was inspired by and uh the, for the past you know 12 13 years of doing this music stuff you know I've, I've I've been stuck here so that's a good sign that means that I found some good inspiration so yeah but also you're not giving yourself any credit here you're you're like you are obviously very good at it like very good at oh it. well thank you very much I mean I think that's very nice you say, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, when I started, I didn't have any musical background, any musical, you know, theory. When I was young, I tried a couple instruments and I played the guitar a little bit. I, you know, learned piano, but my brain and my learning style, I've always felt like I had, a, um, like when I, when I have, when I, how I learn and, and, and create is I have to uh, just do it. I have to force myself into doing it. You know, if I need, if I want to, it, it could be anything, learning anything. I have to just do it. And if someone says, Hey, you know, here's this chord and play it like this. And here's, you know, uh, everything I, for some reason, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. And so, um, you know, going back to what you're saying is, you know, for me, I've always thought of myself as like, I have, I have so much more to learn about music and I'm trying to learn all the time. And so, um, it's, it's, it's always great when I hear that people are, you know, like my music and I'm always thinking to myself, like, this is bizarre because I, you know, I don't know how I got here, you know? So, but I think it's just, uh, you know, I've just, I've, you know, tried to learn as much as I can and I'm excited. And I think I enjoy the process of, of getting better. You know, you can always get better. This is true. And you never stop learning. You say you don't know how you got here, but there there were steps that you took. I mean, you obviously had a program, you made a song, you did a thing, you released it, and, and all of a sudden it had 40 million streams. How what was the 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 gap between the putting it on Spotify, Apple Music, and the 40 million? Was it kind of like an overnight thing? Well, I mean, when I was first starting my career in, in terms of like learning how to produce music and stuff, I mean, I started in 20. 10 
So 2010, around then 2011 was when I was really starting to dabble and it was absolutely <laughs> terrible. Um, but you know, the, back then there was no Spotify. There was no, the only thing you could buy music on iTunes, but oh, wow. when you, when you, when you would put music out, it was, it was SoundCloud. That was really the, the first time. And that's where you, you know, for, for me as a, as an electronic music fan, you found music either on music blogs or you found music on SoundCloud as SoundCloud got bigger. And even when I was first starting, SoundCloud was really early and it was just kind of like a wild west. And, you know, so for me, when my career started, it actually was because of SoundCloud and it was because of the ability for people kind of for the first time to put music out. And I was finding music from people from Europe and, you know, Australia and, you know, this and that. And, and, and like, wow, listen to this, listen to this, this is so inspiring. And everyone's doing different things. And, um, I think, you know, people found me the same way. Right. And, and I was very fortunate that, you know, in that time you could have a song that could get, you know, even a hundred thousand plays or, you know, a couple hundred thousand plays on SoundCloud was, was like a, a big deal. And it was like, you know, labels were like, Oh, let's grab this or, you know, whatever. So I think that's where, you know, I found my success. And so I'm very grateful for that, but it's, it's weird to think now that there's the streaming world because I kind of miss those days because there was a lot more interest in what was coming up instead of, you know, you know, it's just harder now for people to come up, I think, because mm -hmm. there's the barrier of entry. It, it, everything's playlist based and Spotify. Sorry, I'm really talking a long time here, but no, no, um, no, it's go. you know, it's, it's, it's just a different world. It, it, there's a little bit less of people experimenting. And now, you know, even I'm guilty. I go on my phone, I go on Spotify. I know I go to a couple of playlists that I like and I scroll through there and that's it. You know, I don't take the time to explore and, and uh, browse for new music. Like I, as much as I used to, I still do it, but you know, and even SoundCloud is just, now it's just kind of hectic to, <laughs> to go through, you know, it is. it's not the same as it was. Yeah. It is, you know, and I, I'm, I'm elder millennial. So I also am from SoundCloud generation and mm -hmm. where it all started, you know, and I, I remember I remember all of these things and I remember how easy it was, like you say, to find music. And now I'm kind of just consuming what Spotify and iTunes are telling me I'd like next, you know? So I'm not right. expanding my brain at all at this point, which mm -hmm, like, is, mm -hmm. is actually really sad now that you, now that you say that. Because yeah. I did read somewhere that the more new music we listen to, the more synapses we make in, in our mm -hmm. brains. So you're mm -hmm. actually growing your brain by listening to new stuff. But you actually make music across genres. And yes, yes. I, I've got, I have to ask you about this because, like, okay, so I listen to rock and metal. And I, I kind of have a feeling that you, you, can't, you, you do quite, you, you dabble in a bit of rock and metal music. Um, how does one who listens to rock and metal make dance music? But then also, like, I feel like you're also making darker dance music. I don't know the actual terms for them, like house, deep house, dark house, whatever, synth. I know synth. I like synth wave. I like dark synth. <laughs> how do you do all of that? And, and how do you keep them all separate from each other? Or are they? Well, I mean, that, that's a great question. Um, I think, so to your first point, yes, I love metal music and I grew up on it. And I, you know, but what's funny is I, I listen to, everything like it, it is like when i put my spotify liked you know on shuffle and i'm in the car with people they'll be like this is the most random <laughs> a bit of music you know because i and i think that that kind of shows like you were saying in my music i've always i've always had a really hard time you know being like i'm gonna make the same song 40 different times you know but with some different sounds you know i think that a lot of times people want artists that they like to do that right because oh you have a certain sound you do it really well keep doing it. But for me, I feel like once I've done it, or even a couple of times, I don't feel inspired as an artist anymore. And I want to keep challenging myself and my listeners to listen to different things. Um, for me, you know, I always loved metal music when I was young, because I have this thing with just, I love any music that just gives me a euphoric energy. And there's a lot of that. And you can get euphoria from, you know, music that's not even remotely like metal music. You know, I, I listen, I like classical music. I like listening to, sc to scores from films. Um, but for me, I'm a big, you know, what I, what I like about metal, especially if, you know, you, if you think about like the, the breakdowns in metal, right? Um, it's, it's power chords, it's, it's simplistic rhythms. It's, it's very repetitive. 
And for me, I feel like there's a definitely a correlation in dance music because, you know, whenever I make a drop or I make whatever, a lot of times my ear is always thinking, what is, what is going to be something that is very repetitive and simple, but is going to get stuck in your ear. And I think that a lot of times in, in metal music, that's what it is. You know, you're, you're, you have your chorus, your, your lyrics, but I've always enjoyed the songs that are, had those, you know, the power chords or the riffs or the breakdowns. It's just like, I get into it. I, I, I like scroll back and I want to listen yeah. to it again. So I think that's where maybe some of my influence came from. And, you know, I love hip hop and I love, uh, you know, so it's kind of like, I think subconsciously I'm taking a little bit of elements of all the stuff I listen to and putting it in one. Um, but definitely it makes it hard for me to explain to Spotify, like what my sound is and all that <laughs> stuff. So we always run into that issue. So, you know, and also which category and like the Grammys, I would assume, or like the billboards, like what, what would you, if you had to, I know we don't do this anymore, but if you had to, what would you be? Like in, within the electronic or just in general? No, like in, 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 in electronic music. Cause it's a little I, bit you know, it's, it's a little bit high. Yeah, yeah, it is. I would consider it like, you know, a lot of people would probably say that I'm like trap music, you know, but uh, I would, here in the States at least, but trap music is also like, true trap music is like hip hop from Atlanta in, in the United States where, you know, so I, it's like electronic trap, but I think I kind of just like the, the kind of just like bass, you know, even though a lot of times bass people think kind of a dubstep or something. Mm -hmm. I just like a lot of my music is obviously very bass heavy and, and high energy, you know, for the party paper stuff. And so I think, yeah, I'm just, just bass, electronic bass music. Yeah. Dylan, when you're working on a song, does what comes first? Is it like a, a feeling, a lyric, a note, what happens first? You know, it's different every time. Um, it really depends on, you know, my, my situation, where I'm at, where I'm at mentally, where, um, you know, early on, I was just so inspired by, you know, electronic music and coming into that world when I was in high school and then into college and beyond or university. And, um, I, I was just, I was just, you know, here's my energy. I'm going to put it out. You know, a lot of those early songs for me that people might know, you know, were just kind of, I wanted people to just shake their butt and, you know, dance and have a good time. And as I've grown older and, 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 you know, learn more about production and, and challenge myself, I've started kind of pulling elements from my life and, and influences like that. And so I think definitely the best art from artists that I look up to and love is always stuff that comes from, you know, a deep place or something that is, you know, it could be pain, it could be humor, it could be a loss, it could be, you know, whatever. And so I think that as I've gotten older, I've tried to include more of those things, but it really could be like, I could literally be listening to some, you know, someone on Spotify that artists I like, like, Oh, I love that. And that just gave me the biggest inspiration to try something in that world. What could, what would it sound like from my head? Mm. Or I might just be like, you know, I am feeling really, you know, melancholy today and I'm going to try to go write something very mellow. But um, as you can see with my music, it's all over the place, right? So yeah. it's kind of like there's inspiration all over for this album that this song Hollow is, is about, um, you know, just like the pandemic, everything was shut down. We were all locked in and, you know, it's, it, there are a lot of uncertainty. But for me, and I'm sure you've heard from some people too, that it was a weird blessing for me because I didn't know how to stop. And I was saying no, I was not saying no to shows. I was playing every day. I was um, running myself down mentally, physically um, for years. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful that I get to do this as a job and people want to see me play. And um, by the time that it happened, it kind of forced me to stop. And I started making music for myself again, which I wasn't doing for a long time. I was just making music for what I thought people wanted. And so when I got back in and was making music for, for me, Dylan, again, uh, I think that it really has come out good because it kind of brought me back to the joy of when I first started. So I think a lot of, the, there've been a lot of this, like you say, a lot of people have said similar things and mostly creatives have said this. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. that this, this space was really good for creatives to step away, look at it and remember the why. Because <laughs> when it's hustle culture and when you're wearing your burnout, like a badge of honor and you're touring the world and you're doing all these things, you don't look at the why anymore and you, you forget. And then it's just the next goalpost, right? And they keep shifting. But these three years have made us all kind of pause and go, well, 
Is this really what I want to be doing? Can I be doing it differently? And yeah. also, where's the balance? Yeah, and I think that you're exactly right. But I think that it definitely gave me a sense of, you know, extreme gratitude to have been able to make a career in music in the first place. Because, you know, as you know, there's a whole thriving music scene in South Africa. There's a thriving music in every country and every place. And then, you know, in the United States, we have kind of a long arm and reach across the world. And there's so many people around the world every day uploading music to SoundCloud and there's new kids coming up. And, you know, exactly. I, I'm always I'm inspired. I listen to music all the time. And I'm like, you know, this kid is where I was at that age, you know, light years ahead. And I, and it inspires me and it fires me up because I'm like, this is my competition. I got to, I got to stay relevant and I got to keep working. Um, but, you know, I think that it makes you really grateful that, you know, you have fans and that you, you, you have a career and that you're able to, you know, uh, make a living and all that stuff. So I think that it was great for me to kind of, I become really jaded and, and uh, it kind of took me down a peg and was like, Hey, this is, this can be taken away any day, any time. Mm. And, you know, you chose to do this and this is what you want to do, but, you know, so for, I think it's good. And I always know it can be taken away, you know, and um, it, I think it makes you a little bit more appreciative of just anything and everything. So then how do you deal with disappointment? Um, I mean, we all look at your Instagram and I know, I know, and I'm sure we all, we all to a degree realize that it's your highlight reel, but behind that, there must've been closed doors. There must've been noise. There must've been moments where you were like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And like, I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm disappointed. How do you, how do you deal with, what do you do? How do you fix it? You know, that's a, that's a really good question. And I don't think I've ever been asked that question before. So, um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, it's it's so hard. I don't, I don't know if I like have a specific thing that I'm like, oh, I do. But you know, funny enough, and for anyone that's watching and that feels like they've been told no a lot, I, I think no is like one of the best things you can get told because at the time it feels the worst, but it hopefully if you're able to use that and fire you up to keep going. Um, you know, and, and that's, that might be a little bit of a rosy way to look at it, but, you know, for me, a lot of the no's that I've been told, you know, were the reason why I'm here today. And, you know, even when I started my career, I was a duo and uh, my buddy and I were doing it and he decided that it wasn't the right, he, it wasn't what he truly loved and was in his heart. And I, I totally was supportive of that. But when he was gone, I felt like, oh, this is it. I, I lost my, my dream. I lost my idea. Um, and this was long before SoundCloud and this was long before, you know, this is a long, long time ago, but for me, that kind of, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a no literally, but it was a no in the sense that I thought it was over. And for me, it was kind of like, okay, well now, instead of being like, oh, we have this as a group and us as a whole, I was like, this has to be on me now. And I'm like, if, if, if I'm the only one that I have the answer to. And so for that reason, I think alone, like I was able to get to where I'm at now, but funny enough, even now, I mean, I, we, we literally leading up to, you know, this album that I've been putting out, um, you know, when we were talking to, uh, we talked to every label under the sun and I got a lot of no's and, you know, even, even now I get no's all the time, you know, no's on a show or no's on a, you know, label thing or no's on, you know, this and that. And I think that it's, it's, uh, it's good. I think sometimes I think it's good to hear it, but I also think that it's, you know, it, I don't know if it ever is going to go away and unless you're, I guess, maybe like you know the biggest star on the planet or something, but I'm, I'm you don't want to be, you don't want to be told no. yes all the time either though. You know, like that doesn't help you. Valid. So valid. So. Okay. Before I, I, I definitely want to talk about the album and I want to talk about the single that we're currently playing, but um, I, I, I need to ask you because this isn't, you, you said something that sparks a, a question in me you were speaking about authenticity and about writing about the the hurt and the good, the bad and the ugly, right? Mm -hmm. How do you, cause music is a language, it's like math, but it's all different mm -hmm. kinds of math. Like um, rock is different math to hip hop is different math. It's just all different yeah. equations. How do you translate hurt and sadness or like things that you're going through that are not pretty things into a dance song and still make it that everyone is going to want to jump up and down and, yeah. That's a good question. Um, well, I think that what I've realized too is that not every single song of mine necessarily needs to be a song that I'm going to play at every show and every party. 
Okay. Because sometimes I've, I've in some of the songs on the album, I mean, like I, I don't plan on necessarily playing those at shows because for me, it's an expression. It's a moment in time. It's something that I want people to listen to and enjoy, but I don't feel every single thing I need to make fits maybe a party favor show as it is right now. Um, and I think that, you know, if, if I was probably an artist, like we talked about in the beginning where I was making a, a very similar thing and it was maybe just a couple variations that might be different because I could play those songs and they can come through the same way. Um, but when I'm like writing about those moments, a lot of times for me, those moments that are really, really personal, you know, kind of come out, how they come out. And for me, I like to make music that even if it's coming from a darker place, it makes the listener feel positive because I kind of want to flip it to um, like, like the, the, the song hollow. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, very nine inch nails kind of inspired tonally record. And um, you know, it's, the song's about feeling hollow and empty and, and all these things. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want to feel this way. I'm going to, I'm letting loose. I'm, I'm, even though I feel this way, I'm using this ex explosion of sound and sonics to kind of get out your demons, you know? And so for me, sometimes people just need that, you know, that's what I love so much about electronic music too, is that it's, it's for a lot of people, it's a, it's a very um, cathartic experience or it's a way that, even if you're raging, even sometimes even for metal, you know, people go and they mosh or they headbang and they sweat. And for those, for that hour and change or, or, you know, your time at a festival, sometimes it's like all the, can I swear? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh yeah. All the, all the bullshit, you know, or all the, 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 the stuff in your world can kind of go away. And I think that we're all, you know, with everything going on in the world right now and for the past three, four years and change, it always seems like there's something crazy going on. And, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people need that. And, and so I think for me, it's always like, I don't want my music to just be like, I'm sad, you be sad too. Like, let's all be sad together. Even if there's those things that are, have those tones, it's like, I want it to still feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. That makes sense? I don't yes. Know. Yeah. When you were doing an album, do you think of this? Do you think of like, what ingredients you're putting into this album because like i i keep talking about this because i'm old but when when we used to write albums like i used to buy skunk and you alive or whatever it was and there was a beginning a middle and an end it was a story there was a story arc and you maybe had a secret track at the end but the mm -hmm. album told the story now we have single 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 singles and that's it or an ep yep. and that's it and there is no more story do you think of how your album comes together and like the flow yeah. So this one was, so this album, I've released an album before this and that it's funny because I'm going backwards just to kind of give you context. When I made that album, which was my first album, I made it. And that was during that period where I was just go, go, go. And it was, you know, uh, touring like crazy, playing every festival, you know, getting all this, these accolades and things. And I, and I made this album and I was making what I thought other people wanted. And so I just threw everything. It was like, you know, I had, you know, if you know rappers, I had Little Baby on there and I had ASAP Ferg and Juicy J and I had, you know, these singers and I had this and this. But when I listen back and, and look back and when I had that time during COVID to look back on this album, at least in 2017, I say, like, I, I don't know where I was. Like, I wasn't, that wasn't me coming through. Like, there's great records on there. I'm proud of a lot of the music, but there was no plan behind it. It was just kind of like a mishmash of, uh, and it sounds like I'm hating on it. I'm not, it's just more like it, it, for me, that's the only downside I see of it is like the, that it, I wasn't in the headspace that I'm at now, which I wish I was flash forward to now when we've been making this, I really wanted it to feel like a journey. There's like an interlude section on the album. Um, there's, you know, the outro is the most mellow song. It's called anxious. It came out this past December. Um, and it kind of, I hope it, you know, we caught me and my management team, we kind of worked to kind of curate the, the flow of it. But um, I think this is the first time that I really tried to, to take a journey with the, the listener through the whole album. Um, but it's hard. Like you said, there's so many, it's everything single based. So uh, it's I, it, it, in this day and age, it's hard. I don't even know if I'll do an album again for a long, long time. 
think it's maybe EPs I or that. I understand it, but I hate it. I love, I like an album. I especially like to buy like a record now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Always, but like, especially now there's something different about a Sunday morning with really nice coffee, listening to David Bowie on an, L, like an LP as opposed to like just on Spotify. Yes. You know, it's the, uh, it's the like the, the ritual of it, you know, getting it on, yeah. playing it. It's beautiful. I think people now are just not, you know, like we talked about earlier, it's just, a, it's a, everyone's attention spans are shorter. And, you know, I think it's people kind of want something and then they want the next thing and they're not really listening to albums anymore. And unfortunately, I think it's just also because of the nature of there's so much focus on streaming and mm. making a single do so well. And we're all, we're slaves to Spotify and I in, in Apple music now, you know I mean? It's like, everything has to be a certain amount of plays and, you know, artists get, you know, 0 0.001, you know, cent every time songs played, you know, whereas, you know, and there, it, it's, it's different. Even, you know, when people listen to albums, there was no way for you to hear what you can hear now. Like I can go on Spotify and listen to everything that's ever come out in music at all ever. time, at any time yes. in two seconds, Yes, which is amazing. But I also, you know, when, when you were like the area you're talking about, you only kind of knew what was coming out from the artist you knew of, or if you followed, you know, if you were at a show and you, and you picked up their, their record that they were selling, or, you know, you heard about it from this label or whatever, they kind of force fed you what you wanted to hear. So it's weird because there's a, there's good things about that, meaning that you have the world at your fingertips, but at the same time, there's almost like information overload mm. where you can't, you know, focus anymore. So, I, got, I got out of track. And adventure. <laughs> those, yes. those songs will forever be important to us because of the experience that we had in finding them. But, um, okay, so Hollow is out. It's available everywhere. Um, what is next for you? I know that you've just dropped, but I have to ask. It's like my job. <laughs> what is next for you? So next is literally the album. Um, it's, uh, what, what time is it there? In, in, uh... It is 22.46. Almost 11. Okay. Yeah. But is it, is it, is it Monday still? Uh, yes, it is Monday still. Yes. Okay. So it comes out Friday. Um, and it, and it's, which is crazy to think, cause I started working on this in the middle of the pandemic and it's, it's finally here. Um, but yeah, there's a song on there, uh, called spirits part two. It's actually the part two, the part one is a interlude. That's not coming out as a single or that will be on the album and it flows directly into that um if you remember old albums that would where the song would end and it would end perfectly into the next Love. song it's like that and that song is like very cinematic and chill and it goes into this song which is a kind of high octane um trap banger with uh this a rapper from atlanta named lil nar um and that one's really fun we shot a crazy music video for that and so that's like the final single that comes out with the album and then the album is out uh on Friday. And, uh, I think that there's, we've done, let's see, let's save me, lose my mind. Anxious. So there's going to be about like six or seven songs that people haven't heard on the album. I'm excited. Do you have a favorite? So. Do you have one that you think we're going to love more than? Oh, you know, I was really, really excited for this song hollow that just came out to come out because that's been one that I really wanted my fans to learn the lyrics to, because a lot of times when you have a big vocal record like that, if you play it the first couple of times, people are like, oh, this is awesome, but I don't know the lyrics. I don't know, you know, the context of the song. And so that was really nice to, you know, that now it's been out and I've played a couple of shows. People are already starting to kind of like, I can see them knowing the lyrics. Um, but there's a couple that are on the, the album that come out with the album that I'm really excited about. This one's called Signs, which is very, 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 very high energy, but it's, it seems to be like one of the best, like it's, it's a banger song, but it's a, and when I play it live, it's just, everyone's like, oh, you get the, oh, you know, which is always a, is, is a good one. So do that one. Still, yeah. Do yeah. you still get the O's when you walk on stage and you see like, or do you, do you get that? Like, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. I don't really get nervous. I get anxious. I, I really like to, like when I show up to a show, I like to get there like five minutes before I go on, because if I sit around like this, and I wait and I hear the opener and I hear this and that, I just start like twiddling my thumbs and I'm thinking like, I want to be out there. I want to be playing. And it kind of like stresses me out. Um, but I definitely do. I mean, there's been some recent shows and I think especially having it all taken away and then coming back to some of these recent shows, 
um, you know, playing those moments or having those drops and everyone cheers and you, there's nothing like big, big festivals because, you know, the scope of people and the size and the production and everything, you're all collectively enjoying something at the same time. And, you know, when I'm up there, I'm so focused on mixing and in that. And sometimes I for, I forget to kind of like stop and take it in, mm. you know, but there's been a couple of times recently where I've been able to do that. And I definitely got like chills, you know, I got the full goosebumps down, down your body. I don't know if you call them goosebumps down uh, in South yes. Africa, but goosebumps. Yes. yes, some people call them like goose pimples and I've heard other weird names, but goosebumps. <laughs> I've, um, I wanted to ask you about festivals because I was actually talking on my show the other night. I've never been to a festival. I've never been to any kind of festival. And I feel like I need to go. After the pandemic, like I feel like I need to live a little harder and misbehave. Yes. More. So yes. are you playing anything anywhere? I am. Um, you know, like right now, unfortunately, just still because of some of the travel stuff, like most of the shows that I'm playing are in the United States. Mm. Um, so if you're making it over that way, you, I'm sure you'll see me. Um, I'm also in another group. I'm one half of a duo called Side Piece, which is like house music. Um, and we've been playing like crazy a lot. I've been doing while I was working on this album, I was really enjoying getting to kind of play something new and, and, and different while I was working on this. And it kind of was a fun um, thing. So we've been playing a lot of that. We, we, we're playing like Tomorrowland in Belgium. Um, this actually what? That's next month. Uh, about actually about a month from today. Uh, and um, yeah, so we're all around. You know, Asia hasn't opened back up yet, really, to to shows. And unfortunately, I've never been to South Africa, which I've always wanted to go. And I hope to be there one day. So I'll make it down there, hopefully. That I have this now on record. So you you now I'm gonna hold Please you do. to it. This is a plea to the, you know, <laughs> the promoters of, of South Africa. Bring, bring me down. Yes. Agreed. Dylan, thank you so much for your time. Good luck with the album on Friday. I mean, do we say good luck thank or break you. a leg? I, I'm never sure, but that thing. However you want to say it, I'll take it the way that you meant it. Love and light. And we will all be streaming it all day on Friday. Thank you for thank your you time. Thank you so much. And hope to see you soon in South Africa. I can't wait. Jacaranda FM.